Next, from Western Illinois University in Macomb, we go one-on-one -on -one with University President Jack Thomas and hear the impact of the state's budget standoff on the students and faculty at Western Illinois University. This runs about 20 minutes. President Jack Thomas of Western Illinois University, thanks for joining us on the Illinois Channel. Thanks, Terry, for having me. We uh, saw you speak recently at the Capitol uh, on behalf of funding higher education and wanted to follow up with you. One of the things that has happened, everyone knows the budget crisis going on around the state of Illinois. There hasn't been a budget for two years. And the impact that it's had on any number of institutions and certainly higher education across the state. Let's start off with Western. Before we get some of the impact, tell us a little bit about Western University. How, how many students do you have? How many staff? And, and what is the general size of your budget? Western Illinois University was around 10,000 students and around 1,500 uh, faculty and staff here at the university. And uh, we were founded in 1899 as a teacher's college and we evolved into a comprehensive uh, master's degree granting uh, institution. We're located in Macomb, Illinois and which is our main campus. We also have a campus in the Quad Cities, uh, which is we consider our new riverfront campus. And we started that campus some years ago in an old IBM building, but we uh, have a brand new riverfront campus there now in the Quad Cities. So we have two campuses. And we serve a wide range of students uh, from first generation, uh, minority students, and uh, majority students. So we have a wide range of students. About 50% of our students come from the Chicago land and the other 50% uh, of the students come from uh, some of the other rural areas as well as uh, international students. You know and that's I always thought of Western as being a teacher's school but I'm glad you brought up that you've evolved into having a whole other range of courses. And one of the things in preparing for this, I know that you are kind of recognized as being friendly to veterans. How is that so? And to what extent has those policies, have those policies paid off for uh, college-age students who are veterans? Well, we've been named by Military Time Edge magazine as a military-friendly institution and a best for vets uh, institution as well. And we serve a great number of veterans here at Western Illinois University. We have a veteran resource center uh, and lots of students who really take advantage of uh, the veteran uh, benefits uh, here at our university. So we're very pleased to uh, be a, uh, a military friendly institution and I'm sure you already have noticed that we are the only institution that has been named uh, the Leathernecks after the Marines. Rock Hansen, one of our former uh, athletic directors and football coaches uh, helped us many years ago to get that name and we're the only institution in the country that, ha that uh, has that as a, the, the Leathernecks as a mascot. You know, uh, President uh, Thomas, one of the things that I think people misunderstand, when they hear that we have colleges that are state funded, a lot of people presume that 100% of your funds come from the state. That is not the case. Uh, with any of the universities, but the amount of state funding uh, varies. Do you know the approximate of your budget? How much would come from, uh, let's say, direct state funding? Well, uh, approximately around 51 million of our budget, somewhere uh, out of 200 and. $20 uh, uh, million, dollars, about $51 million uh, uh, dollars actually come from the state. And as you know, we are tuition uh, driven. We uh, get funds from uh, room board tuition and fees, as well as auxiliary uh, funds that we receive, and, and, and some other funds as well. So about $51 million uh, actually uh, came from the state in FY15. It has been a little higher than that years ago, but as you know, over the years, that has been reduced uh, for various reasons and the challenges that we are having in the state. You know, as we sit here, I just covered a educational conference where uh, Ralph Martiri spoke. He uh, is somewhat of an expert on Illinois budgeting, and he mentioned that over the last 
16 years or so, the state of Illinois has cut their support of higher education by about $1 billion. Uh, so it sounds like that you're having your own share there of cutbacks. But with the $51 million that you normally would be getting from the state, and are not now because there's not that spending authority. First of all, let me ask, does that include MAP grants or would uh, the monetary awards program would those grants be uh, separate from the 51? The, the MAP funding for us was about $11 million, and those funds will be separate from the regular uh, state appropriation. So, and not getting, last year, not getting a full state appropriation and not getting MAP funding, that uh, has hurt us as well as all of the uh, colleges and universities here in the state of Illinois. And it means that you have to do business a little different. We had a reserve in place. We've utilized that and we've used that. And now we are uh, advocating, continue to advocate to the state. And as you may be aware, last year we received what we considered to be stopgap fundings. We received two of those uh, last year. And uh, that helped many of us, uh, of the institutions, to uh, make it through the year. Uh, we, ha we have never banked on not getting a state appropriation. And then for two consecutive years, not receiving a full budget, uh, that is devastating to higher education. And it has actually created a crisis of confidence in our state as well as for higher education at, uh, at our colleges and universities throughout the state. Um, I'm sure you know that uh, the state of Illinois has been the second largest uh, exporter of students from our state, second to New Jersey. And that, uh, in terms of recruiting students, it has been uh, quite devastating in, in the state of Illinois. So we have all been uh, the presidents and chancellors of the public universities, as well as others, have been in Springfield advocating where you met me, you saw me there uh, giving a speech uh, at the higher education uh, rally that we had in Springfield uh, to advocate uh, for funding uh, so that uh, we can come out of this uh, uh, predicament that we are in. So we're just very hopeful that we will get a state appropriation uh, this year. While we're on this topic, it, you know, some people might say, well, uh, they're in, I don't know, you know, some people may be indifferent, but it's not uh, to, to the needs of different schools, I should say, but it's, it's not just the schools, it's not just the students. Uh, in a town like Macomb, and I don't know offhand the population, but I'm sure you're going to be one of the major employers and have a huge economic impact, not only on Macomb, but on the region. Uh, do you have any sense of how this uh, budget impasse and, and what you're having to manage through is also impacting the rest of the regional economy? Yes, we are the largest uh uh, employer here in Macomb and in the West Central Illinois region and when you think about West Central Illinois people think of Western Illinois University. We have a large uh, footprint here in our state in the West Central Illinois region and we have about a 473 million dollar uh, uh, million dollar uh, economic impact on this, uh, on the 16 county region here, 16 county area here in our region. So we have a great impact. When people, uh, people, when we look at Macomb and we look at West Central Illinois, they look to Western Illinois University, and we have a uh, almost a half a billion dollar impact on on this region. So people, uh, I think the mayor said it here best. Uh, mayor Mike Inman said it best that so goes Western, so goes Macomb. So the town as well as. Uh, the entire region is uh, supportive of us and very much behind this university. As president, we create, I created what we call, my leadership team and others created what we call the uh, President's Executive Corporate Cluster, 
where we go out to the community. We have what we call the mayor's summit. We have uh, the uh, public school summits where we partner with the city as well as the local areas around and also with the principals, the counselors and superintendents. Uh, and we all come to we have all come together and trying to figure out what we can do a little different and unfortunately we have not been able to depend on our state as we have uh, in the past so until things get a little better we're going to have to do business a little different uh, from what we have done but I'm uh, very optimistic here through all of this, we have been able to uh, co continue to provide a quality and well-rounded education for our students. We continue to rank high in U.S. News and World Report, as well as the Princeton Review, and a as a best Midwestern uh, university and a best uh, uh, college. And also what we just talked about in uh, Military Time Edge magazine as a, uh, a military friendly institution and a best for vets uh, institution uh, as well. And also we continue to rank high in uh, other rankings in terms of online classes and being a best bang for your buck and also uh, just the kind, the quality of the education that we uh, provide. And you and I just talked about Western starting as a, uh, a teacher's college. Uh, we're known for uh, many of our signature programs. When you think about law enforcement and justice administration, we are the fourth largest in the country. And uh, we have a, a, a well-known engineering program as well as nursing, supply chain management, our broadcasting uh, program. Uh, and teacher education as well as the accountancy and agriculture and many other uh, just high quality programs. Our students come to us because of the unique academic programs that we have and I often say that an institution cannot be everything to everybody but an institution can carve its own niche, and that's exactly what we have done here at Western Illinois University. We've carved our own niche, and we have produced some of the best and brightest uh, students uh, in the world, and we encourage them to go out into the world and uh, be productive citizens and utilize the knowledge that they have gained here at Western Illinois University. So through the midst of all of the uh, uh, the uh, reductions that we've had due to the state budget impasse, we've still been able to do some great things. But our goal is but to Let make me, if I might interject, just to ask, because one thing I want to get to is, um, I want, you know, in talking in years past with some of the other college presidents, and I know at uh, Southern Illinois University, uh, they had to, they let, they have 500 positions, over 500 positions. Uh, where people have retired that they just haven't filled. How have you managed through this period, number one? Uh, and you've been the president now for, a, what, about six years, I believe? Uh, yes, at, this is my sixth year as president. How, so if you could uh, tell us, how have you managed through this period? Um, what, what can't you or have you had to put on the back burner that would have otherwise advanced uh, the cause of education at Western? And what would you want the governor and the lawmakers to know if you could get their attention and say, here's something you really need to focus on about, you know, the damage that is being done to higher education in Illinois? Well, we've had to put a lot of things on hold, and we have had, uh, we've made some reductions in some of our academic programs. We've had layoffs and we still have furloughs here uh, at our university, and some have, uh, postpone uh, salary increases uh, as well. And over the years, when we've had some uh, vacancies, we just have not filled those, some of those positions. And, but it gets to a point where, when I talk about, we think about quality, there are some areas where you have to uh, fill those positions because we want to, through the midst of all of this, we want to make sure that it does not affect the quality of the education that we are providing. 
What I would say to the governor and to the legislators uh, is what I've said before in my testimonies, as I said in the rally, uh, we want individuals, uh, legislators to come together and to uh, come build some consensus and come up with a budget uh, for uh, higher education because we feel that the, there's been an erosion of uh, higher education in our state and some of the best talents uh, leaving the state and going elsewhere. So it is important that we rebuild when it comes to uh, uh, investing in, in higher education uh, in our state. So these are the things that we have stated um, to restore our FY16 and come up with an adequate adequate funding for FY17. Now one thing, Terry, that in, in, in talking to legislators, everybody seems to understand uh, the pressures, they apologize to all of us for what we are enduring and having to deal with but nobody is coming to any consensus and, and, and as a public institution we want to maintain our mission here in terms of providing the access to those students who meet our standards but also to make education affordable. What about all of those students who are not even getting an opportunity uh, to get a quality education? If it had not been for public institutions like Weston, I wouldn't be sitting here before you today as a first-generation college student. Many students come here are first-generation college students, uh, many minority students from various backgrounds. So these are the things that we have been stating to the governor and the legislators, and we just hope that at some point they come to uh, some understanding together so that they can come forth with a budget. You know, I uh, <clears throat> grew up in the St. Louis area, and I would say one of the impressions that we had of neighbor, neighboring Illinois uh, was the quality of its higher education. Compared to uh, Missouri, we didn't have quite the number. Illinois is, uh, has something like 200 uh, institutions of higher education, so it's far more than Missouri. So I would just say it, it, it is something that uh, those who are in the legislature and the governor, I, I hope, appreciate that they, uh, they don't want to be doing any damage to what is, in many ways, the crown jewel of Illinois. Well, well Terry, the, the damage be... has already been done. Uh, uh, the, the key is how long we can we con will they continue to erode higher education? And it's going to take a long time to fix all of this in terms of re reinvesting uh, in higher education. How much uh, of, are you... Uh, are you putting off deferred maintenance, uh, cutting those kind of things where, you know, sometimes uh, you might be saving some money by not putting in a new air conditioning system or something along those lines, but after a while you can't wait any longer? Absolutely. We've put off deferred maintenance for a number of years, even prior to this. Prior to this, I was provost and academic vice president here in two th since 2008 and then became president. I can remember where we had reduction even then, where we had to give back to the state and we didn't get funding for deferred maintenance. We have been uh, reallocating funds from uh, our general funds to uh, cover the uh, deferred maintenance and even some of uh, the uh, various kinds of fees we've been utilizing to cover deferred maintenance. I'm on a, uh, a subcommittee now that is looking at deferred maintenance as well as capital projects. Uh, many of the capital, all of the capital projects have been put on hold. Some, some institutions were in the midst of their uh, construction and they had to stop those. Uh, we had a uh, Center for the Performing Arts that was coming on, getting ready to start. We had to put all of that on hold and we have to take care of the deferred maintenance ourselves and what we've been doing in terms of reallocating funds over the years and now it basically has come to a, a stop and that committee now is looking at uh, those emergency kinds of, fun, uh, of projects at the various institutions across the state and how can we get funding to uh, help those institutions who have some emergency kinds of needs. Let's, before we close out, and you know when you say deferred maintenance and you have to put off some of these uh, items you just mentioned like the performing arts, 
it, it reminds me that you also have deferred futures of students who might otherwise be attending, wanting to come to Western and and perhaps be in the performing arts. Uh, and and so it's not just a maintenance issue; it's also sometimes a deferred uh, future for a student. Let's not be doom and gloom though the entire time, as bad as this is. And hopefully the governor and legislators will act with a sense of urgency that they have not had before. But uh, let's close out with some of the uh, promising things that uh, you want to brag a bit about, what's going on over in Western currently. Well, as I said, we're still educating students. We're still providing a quality and education for our students. Many of our students are engaged with the faculty in terms of various kinds of research projects, uh, going to various conferences uh, as much as they can. A lot of that has been put on hold. Uh, we have what we call the Undergraduate Research Day as well as Graduate Research Day where students are presenting their uh, posters as well as their presentations here on our campus. And we can, as I mentioned, we continue to rank high in U.S. News and World Report as well as the Princeton Review. And just a number of things that are happening uh, on our campus and uh, the recognition that we're getting, for example, with our uh, physics program, um, uh, broadcasting, as well as our law enforcement and justice administration program, just a number of recognitions that we have received um, here, while also trying to maintain a, that our education is more, uh, continue to be more affordable uh, for our students. We just had what we call, call the pre-law symposium. Uh, we're getting ready to have our pre-med symposium. So just a number of exciting things that are happening that are involving our students. And our students continue to do good things here and good work and as well as uh, going on to graduate and professional school and also into their care careers. So we're very excited about those things. I don't know if they give medals out to uh, uh, university presidents, but certainly you're managing in a way that I'm sure as you went into the job six years ago, you never imagined you'd have to be doing with the uh, level of economic stress that you're managing through right now. So uh, but it's, congratulations uh, Terry, to you for the job you're doing. Thank you. It's all for our students here at the university. That's what we, we work for our students. So we want to make sure that they get a good experience, have a good experience, learning experience at the university as we had when we were in college, and, uh, college as well. President Jack Thomas, uh, we thank you for joining, you, uh, joining us on the Illinois Channel. Hopefully we can visit you again and maybe uh, by that time, keep our fingers crossed, uh, a budget will be in place and we can be talking about some of the new initiatives that you're launching at that time. Thank you, and I certainly do hope so. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm.